이 혼란의 중심에 여섯 팀이 서 있고 모든 팀들이 하나의 링 안에 들어서서 싸우고 또 싸웁니다. 그 자리에서 쓰러질 때까지. 투를 이겼기 때문에 이제 모든 팀들도 이길 수 있다는 그런 약간 자신감도 얻게 되고. I mean, it's been a long time since we actually have lost threats, but I think this will actually make us a lot stronger. 제가 또 충분히 이길 수 있다고 생각한 상대들한테 졌기 때문에 그 다음에도 한 번씩 기회가 있으니까 그게 잘 살려봐서 복수를 하고. 지금은 좀 저의 자신감을 잘 찾아가는 게 중요한 것 같고. When it comes to T1, we take the games very, very serious. G2, 어, 그 다음에 만나면 복수하겠습니다. T1이랑 RNG를 이기려면 저희가 더 똑똑하게 또더 창의적인 플레이를 많이 만들어야 된다 생각해요. 그 차이가 진짜 크다고 생각하기 때문에 한번 그런 허점을 찌러보고 싶긴 한. 뜬 n 안고 bọn em bây giờ khá chậm sau những trận thua mà bọn em vẫn rất muốn giành chiến thắng. 왕좌에 군림하고 있는 스프링의 제왕. 절대 포기하지 않는다. RNG. 나자,集中冠军赛三冠。我们就是当之无愧的MSI组。没有什么能阻止我们。다가오는 럼블의 카오스 안에서 그들의 꿈들이 충돌합니다. 안녕하세요. <웃음> 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 Need to find a way to to get that leg up and hope RNG drops one later if they want first seed. Yeah, it's really exciting because everybody does want first seed. First seed by far the most important thing here, uh, you know, because you do get to choose your opponent heading towards those semifinals. And there's such a close race between those you know three pool one seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, so every game here extremely important for them. The rematch versus PSG, of course, everybody gonna have that in their minds of yesterday, the beginning of uh, of the yeah. O2 day. For them and, and see what they've been able to correct and learn from the previous one. Uh, of course, the big standout thing to me from draft is that uh, you know PSG took the Orn, which was so critical for G2 success, yep. and then they had to deal with um, you know getting Aatrox and, and trying to come up with a way to um, win earlier than usual rather than relying on some more secure team fights later. Yeah, it does seem like we we've gotten several comebacks that are basically. Well, our team fight's stronger, so you couldn't close the game out in 22 minutes, and you know we got to three items on our primary carry. So guess what? It's time to play a real game, and that's just tended to work out pretty well. I think back to the G2 T1 game way back on day one, like that was outstanding. Well done, G2. But yeah, it turns out they can win while Tristana, and it's easier to team fight for them. They've got the Orn running around, like that's really really helpful. Um, so yeah, are we gonna have that same blueprint? We heard the analysts talk about it. You know, go get a reliable draft, you know, go play hard engage, like just like put your bot lane on a carry, you know, here for the PSG side, because I think those two have been really, really, really good. Um, you know, does that work here against G2, who are definitely looking for vengeance? Yeah, from the from the PSG side, they're looking at it. Uh, they've found a really good strategy here with Bay, constantly putting him on these supportive or denial mid picks, you know, yeah. Lissandra duty, Malzahar duty. Great. That type of stuff gets memed on for mid laners. But Mal's that's one world. <laughs> that is what you have to do when you're playing against Caps, honestly. Honestly, almost every mid laner is going to have to have that duty uh, because he does he does need to be defused. Basically, Caps is actually just a mid lane bomb waiting to go off, and he's been uh, destroying every single you know matchup that he has gone into. So from mm -hmm. the G2 side, yes, they want to create space for him. They want a more stable setup for the rest of the squad because uh, the way that Caps has been playing, he will get you advantages as long as you don't lose them elsewhere. Absolutely so. Going to be a very exciting battle here. I think Riven's going to be uh, just disappearing from champ select here for G2. I appreciate that they tried uh, against their maybe stiffest competition in RNG yesterday, but we're going to see what they actually want to do in this draft. And yeah, I think uh, priority on Orn. Are there good Orn counters? Ones who team fight as well as him. Uh, you know, what kind of bot lane carries do we see? Because Lucian and Callista are pretty much 
unpickable because they're banned almost every game. Yeah, I, I don't think there's actually any mystery with uh, with Orn counter picks or anything like that either. You know, the Aatrox is a premier counter pick, and they used it yesterday, but unable to get enough of an advantage out of it. And yeah. I think the only one that really has had a big impact has been the Mordekaiser. Uh, yeah, I love so that. the question is, do you have enough time invested in a, in Mordekaiser play for you and your team? Because it does alter how you play with your team a bit. Um, you know, did get extra move speed off the passive on this patch too, so it's a little mm -hmm. bit better. But as far as the bands, we don't expect a lot to change with the bands. Um, you know, Ari as well probably will follow. There we go, get that one. Um, and then you start to uh, whittle it a further a little bit down. Sometimes you get some targeted picks towards AD carry pool, um, you know, whittling down here, especially from blue side. PSG has the options. Um, you know, Kaisa, Flacket. Flacket has been actually amazing for G2, uh, doing so much, carrying a lot of their team fights, and especially to me, his Kaisa play. Yeah, he's been really, really good. Um, G2, though, have been attacked for a bit in the bottom lane. Uh, the stat that uh, I, I brought up and have brought up again is uh, deaths pre five minutes. Uh, so the leader, by the way, is Froggy over there with uh, four. He's not doing too hot. But, Froggy has had not had a good time. But the G2, so there have been, there have been 12 total deaths by the five minute mark on the Rumble stage. Three of those 12 deaths belong to the overall G2 bot lane, talking about it at two, Flacket at one. So they have had their stumbles in the early game. Uh, it's like a long row of people at one and then talking about stuff there at two, and so they combine for three. Um, the math's pretty simple there, but um, yeah, what it comes down to is, okay, their late game has been outstanding, right? They've done a really, really good job in the team fights, but make sure they can step up in the early game. All right, really, really high importance here on grabbing this Lee Sin. Um, after the Wukong has been banned, previously, most of the early jungle picks had gone towards Viego, but it, the priority really falling off with the lack of success. And honestly, uh, I, I do put a lot more emphasis on the Lee Sin. So I think this is a good adjustment, you know, kind of halfway here through this Rumble stage, getting for that first pick. Also not Ooh. showing bottom lane yet. Now, Kalista has almost always been answered by Tristana uh, lane. And, and it's gone for the all-in Tristana lane. You know, you get Tristana plus Nautilus. So if they lock in the Kalista here, that one is locked in now here for G2. That's what you expect for Unified and Kai Wing. And to me, the way that PSG wins is Unified has to do well. He is the carry of this team. Him and Kai Wing have done so much. So, and especially when they've prioritized getting him Tristana. This to me seems like a no-brainer Tristana uh, Nautilus combo for PSG answer to the Kalista, but with the way that G2 have been drafting, uh, you know, I actually do kind of trust in Dylan. You know, what is this plan? They've also got to know that that is the most obvious answer in 2-3 in here. Yep, trade out one blade for two. I think scissors, you know, you put the little <laughs> lever in the middle and it becomes scissors, but it's still two blades. So I think that's just an upgrade in kind of all cases. Okay. Have seen a lot of the rel coming through as an answer alongside Tristana. The problem with rel to me is Gragas looks really good against both Trist and rel. Unless you're going to do a flash, like you could just body slam on reaction to crash down and kind of break a lot of that. So I uh, do want to see if Targumus goes for Gragas as an answer here, or if it's still just the Leona Nautilus that we see so often. Obviously less of an engaged champion if you are on Graggy. There it and, is. Yep, okay. Duo that you you know pretty much called out here, the Trasana that you wanted to see, um, and yeah, I'm just curious, is there going to be enough engage on G2? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, like you said, Gragas is the premier counter into Rel. We did see, and, and I like Azale did a replay of of one of the answers where Rel then has to get fancy, and yeah, you're like flashing to remove some of the timing and some of the counterplay there. Looks like we uh, do Ooh, get the lock-in. Lock now, I'm assuming this is going to Yankos for Jungle Poppy here. Uh, Poppy did get the buff on the Steadfast Presence, which is a big part of the reason you pick Poppy in cases like this. Tristana, Rel, Lee Sin all have dashes. All can be interrupted here by Poppy. Yankos can truly be uh, the grandpa protecting the rest of the squad here uh, against all these dashing champions from PSG. I really do like this flex here. They don't have to lock in their answer for the support role. Um, and technically, Poppy could go support, but I I'm assuming it's going into the hands of Yankos. We'll see if they ban Gragas uh, on the side of PSG uh, to, to make their bottom lane a little bit more safe. Because again, Unified and Kai Wing are critical to the PSG success. They really are. They're going for the aggro options, though, instead. Pike going to be removed. Certainly can duel back pretty well. Halo Blade's Pike, he has really high AD. The Q's going to land. Like, you know, if you're going for just the shots on Tristana, I can see that kind of working out as looking good in the two on two. They're obviously not expecting it as. Uh, poppy support is possible. Like you could do it and just go surprise. Jungle yep. last. Uh, right now they're not banning as well. It's the case, but we'll see. 
honestly, too, one of the biggest things for me has been Targamas roams. Uh, this man has been so quick with uh, his roam timings, really opening up some caps play, uh, as well as even visiting up top four Broken Blade. So taking out the pike first against G2, you can always uh, always give some points to that band. And they opt for the Zoe answer instead, taking this one out from caps. Don't, don't want to let them have that extra range from mid lane. Of course, there hasn't been a ton of investment otherwise into mid lane. Every other mid lane band so far is just standard. Yep, and haven't seen the rest of the draft just yet. Not else would come through as a very standard engaged support. That's going to be the lock in here. Uh, pretty hard to anchor to interrupt a crash down, something like that, but you still have uh, obviously just overall engaged tools. Poppy, not the best team fight starter. Honestly, you'd want something bigger than that. So mm. Nautilus fits the team comp. Again, not the lane counter, but the draft for the five on five, which totally reasonable. Yeah, exactly. Point and click with the ultimate here is one way to force Tristana to stop jumping around if she's starting to get resets as Ooh. well. Top side, they do go with the cannon into the Gwen. We've seen this several times. Um, you know, decent decent matchup. You can hover the the range outside, um, uh, get just inside of the mist. Um, your early laning is pretty decent. The real question is, what was the protection ban on Zoe? Is it just respect to caps, or is it actually going to be something that has to worry about that range like the Syndra? All right, Syndra definitely a bit more mid range and fairly reliable crowd control. Hoping for you know decent laning phase, but obviously. Oof. This to me though, Freak, this is that deviation where I have loved the hone in of PSG identifying themselves that they want Bay on denial picks. You know, yeah. safe picks, Lissandra, Malzahar, these shut down kind of memeable mid lane picks that will guarantee you some level of value though. This one is definitely much more risky uh, yep. for Bay to be on. He is so much more vulnerable on Syndra. It's a very, very aggressive mid lane matchup into Corky. You want to mm -hmm. punish the Corky early. Caps is throwing it down and saying, hey, Bay, you better do something early because yeah. I'm going to scale into a massive mid poke source of AP, regardless of you banning out the Zoe. Uh, and so this actually puts so much pressure on the mid jungle of PSG. And I think that's exactly what G2 want. This is going to be really interesting. Of course, Corky, ever since Hexrigger buffs from about two months ago, he just Hexrigger first item in any sort of reasonably threatening mid matchup, mm -hmm. and you're going to be fine. Very hard to kill you if he goes for this play. So uh, Caps, yeah, going to be happy to scale. Pressure is on Bay, as you mentioned. And in terms of 5 of 5 power, honestly, it feels pretty close. Yeah. I mean, they do have the possibilities to pull off these plays. You know, if you look at the champions, Syndra and Lee Sin, that's a great combo. But then if you look at the name tags, Yankos and Caps have been the best mid jungle at the tournament and so they're kind of daring you make some early plays on us or else we are going to outscale you know we've got poppy for super secure team fights later on interrupting so much of these dash champions from psg and then of course the corky rockets later all right it comes down to g2 trying to keep pace they are a game behind rng but if rng drop a game and g2 wins out tyvek first place pick your opponent for semifinals. It's probably EG or PSG, <laughs> we'll see. Um, and, you know, G2 would feel very good about that one. But if RNG doesn't drop a game, all G2 can do is say, well, we're just gonna chill in semis and, and you know, probably T1 is then my guess at that point. PSG Talon though, they are a game behind EG, right? They gotta, they gotta make sure they can keep this one going. They need to make sure they can find their way up to the top of the standings uh, because fourth place is the cutoff and PSG at two and four have not made it into that just yet. We are on to the rift. Now that G2 have looked mortal all of yesterday, PSG Talon, who slew them 24 hours ago. <laughs> Gonna have to repeat that. All right, let's see. Fishing for a trap on top side. Okay, we'll see if they can get the wrap around. You generally, one person goes this side, the other two go here. See if they can pincer and get a summoner spell. Yep. And Dash is on backwards, gonna be fine. Yeah, Targamus, you know, if you really screw up, flash Q, anchor, force flash out. You know, let your top lane feel good about that one, but yeah. Yeah, not going to be much of a thing going on here. Bay able to go for a deep chance at a ward if he wants one. Will do so. This will track. I actually like that ward because in any yeah. sort of default poppy pathing, blue, gromp, wolves, and then toward the raptors, right? Through that vision cone. If you don't see him off towards raptors, he's wrapping down bottom side. Yeah, one of the most important things is, is just seeing uh, quadrant transitions uh, for junglers early on. Because uh, again, Yankos. So he has opted for the phase rush poppy, um, which definitely gives you more <gasps> options once you're. Oh, what a good position! Barely Out does not range. catch that ward. Oof! Ah, big miss. I freak. like that ward even more. He, I like that genius ward even more. Ward. <laughs> that's one of the nice things, right? Like, 
put as far back as you can while still seeing the root out. And, and now they don't know that this is still deep warded. Hey, we said there was extra pressure on Bay. And look at him just Woo! standing up here on the mid-season invitational stage. Uh, genius war placement. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, it doesn't matter. Uh, Juhan also is on G2 vision. He does know it, though. Uh, they got an auto attack off on that ward. So uh, during the placements, definitely know that they're going to be tracked both sides here. So both junglers known to be on the top side of the map and will be transitioning towards bottom half. Nice little stun there. Gets two first. Easy QE. Yeah. The other thing here, too, with that ward, we mentioned that Syndra wants to play aggro early into Corky, and you can see him playing up in lane, pushing this wave. He knows that he can hover to his blue side because of that ward. They know the poppy has not transitioned. That's a really good pullback. The target's going to take a turret shot. Actually, two, it looks like. That's pretty meaningful damage. Goes a little bit too far, and Kaiwing there for the flip back in time. Yeah, e even in the level two versus level one kind of discrepancy there, the tower is the real trump card. <laughs> yep. Uh, nice little uh, playing on the range there. So Yankos is going to head over. Uh, ward has already expired, but uh, that the work that that ward needed to do has already been done. And so Bay, when we saw him hover up towards that top side previously, did not um, you know have anything to place, and so. Still continuing up a decent amount of harassment. One potion left for Caps. Yeah, managed to go 18 to 16 in CS, so good job denying three there on Bay's side. But well done by Caps to get the CS anyway on most of that one. Obviously loses some health. And we'll see when he wants to TP back to the lane. Uh, ideally, tier and a Hex Drinker, I think would be a really, really, really great recall timing, but that's obviously very far away. Yeah, that's that's definitely a reach. It's 1800 gold. <laughs> he, is playing, he is playing first strike, but it's still definitely yeah. a reach. You um, recall him before that. Yeah, uh, especially against uh, Syndra a lot of times. Yeah. Bay actually hitting the combos to get that stun, so not getting the return. First strike extra generation. And we just chill a little bit more, right? Uh, we'll see if that CS lead grows above two right now. Yeah, which is a pretty good pace for, for the G2 squad here, especially with the, the solo laners that they have. Two very strong AP scaling uh, solo laners. Again, PSG, they don't have to rush this early on in the game. Only four minutes is not the time period where you start uh, crunching in on the time scaling. Yeah. Um, but are looking for some early invasive movements here with Juhan. So I believe he knows that it was a top side start for the Poppy with that Scar's Bloom knows, okay, he did take Krug's part of the rotation. If you never saw Poppy specifically, I yeah. uh, doesn't know if it was 24 CS or, or 20 to know what you know what kind of clear it was. Uh, but ultimately, looks like he wants to re-invade here. I mean, they do have top side pressure, right? So he and Hanabi could kind of combine for something here. Inkos has a ward that will track if Hanabi comes down. Obviously, Brooklyn can see it. But with that smite, he's going to get Krug's no problem. And now it's going to be a little later recall from Juhan, who... Might have been waiting for ambient gold to get pickaxe plus control ward. I'm not certain on his exact gold income, but uh, recall's a little bit late, and you can see that Yanko's yeah, already on the map. Yeah. You always want to get your, your components here for your iron spike whip. Yeah. Uh, grab your grab your pickaxe is the key timing that you're trying to wait for. Always nice to grab the extra control ward yeah. um, for, for the extra little bit of time there. Obviously, vision is paramount, and Yanko's himself uh, being able to clear out the kind of very shallow ward. Yeah, I know with a 7 camp clear gets you pickaxe pretty much every time. Uh, it's, I think, I, again, I don't know because I don't play a lot of Lee Sin right now, but like, he might have had to wait for the control ward itself, and that's why he was kind of delaying the recall. I was like, I might as well be out here instead of sitting in the fountain. Uh, anyway, as you mentioned, has the vision. Look for the nice flip back there, going in for Flat Kid. Flash gets away from the Tristana slow, and they trade back on a Kaiwing exhaust on. Might have enough damage as, honestly, Flat Kid takes an ignite to maybe push him off, and Kaiwing will stay alive. All right, we've got Double Summoner still up here on Unified, so he's got the bit of an advantage. Targamus does have his flash, and Yekos is on the way, though, so G2 might try and punish the offensive use of Summoner spells. And they've pinged. They've pinged that they don't know if Yekos is around. Targamus flash. They're coming in. All right, are we going to have a play? There's the first shot. Great rocket jump time by Unified. It would see the anchor come down. Rocket jumps away from it. Now Juhan's over, and he's not on vision either. The timing of the ward, though, in, in Tribush did see him. So uh, that, that ward just expired. The the last remnants of life of that G2 uh, Tribush ward did see. And so Yankos just pulls through. They, they they call off the play. It's still going to be a win for PSG Talon, being able to push up and grab this dragon, start their dragon stacking at six minutes. And yeah, it's going to be claimed. It looks like no problem at all. Scarzum is going to see that one happen. They know someone's around. There's Targamus on vision. Juana Smite, you pretty much can't screw this one up. It's obviously possible, but there you go. Q follow. Out he goes. and. Uh, no ward. Has to pull over Bay. And does so. 
Yep, no danger though. <laughs> uh, and again, since uh, the the options with Poppy are either to go Predator or um, Phase Rush. Phase Rush is so much better for later in the game, but obviously Predator makes you more scary towards some of these early gank possibilities that he could have had. Um, it would also require buying boots though. So uh, if you don't want to invest money in early boots, or if you want to go with the free boots, then mm -hmm. you never want to take that rune, and that's probably the option there for Yankos. Fair enough. Pushing on towards that one as he's going to knock down bottom scuttle. Thank you for the gold and XP. We did get the Hexer Recall out of caps. Able to sit around long enough to buy that. Couldn't afford tier. That's fine. I'll stack it later. The important part is that he's going to feel good about uh, pretty much being un all -inable anymore. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's just such a crazy good item. Uh, yeah. Hex Drinker got buffed so, so effectively that... Um, you can generally get almost enough money around the level six timings. Um, so if you can get your recall off, get your get enough money for your hex drinker around the Syndra level six, um, it protects you against that very big kill opportunity spike for the Syndra lanes. And they call Kaiwing back over to clear out the wave once again because Bay is low on mana, needs to get his recall off. Even with those uh, Sork shoes, is going to try and find some extra distance here. Caps found him last time around and interrupted the recall, but Bay is yep. going real deep now. Maybe they just hand off the blue buff and uh, give him some more time out there with extra mana. And speaking of Caps and Bay, he's now up in CS as he collects that wave, 72 to 71. So Caps, congratulations. You have stood the only hard part of the lane. You've got Hextrick and you're up farm. Smooth yep. sailing, bud. Enjoy your team fights. Yeah. All right. Let's see if anything changes at Rift Road fight. Both AD carries are bottom side. Caps, does he have a package he's picking up right now? Can't quite hear the game noise. If no. he does not, then he's I think... He's moving too slow. Yeah. All right, it's going to be a little bit of damage towards Argamas, but looking to play for this. And Smite is up and improved on both junglers. 900 would be the hit. Ult's going to come in and grab the Good support. Ejection. Eyes available. Nicely claimed. That is smited away by Juhan. I believe they stunned him. That is a kick flash to get the kill. First blood for PSG Talon. Oh my goodness. Yanko's getting a little bit too much there. Yeah, since Caps does not have the package, I thought for sure G2 just gives that one up. But wanted to get fancy with the poppy there. And Yankos goes down for giving them first blood as well as the first Rift Herald. Well, 500 gold leads, gonna feel pretty good right now. PSG Talon, do they actually manage to repeat history from yesterday? It would be G2, ugh, beat G2 losing three in a row. Incredibly unexpected, but we'll watch this one again. Yeah, Yankos, uh, I mean, he, he gets an ejection, but it's only on the support here. Uh, wants to go for the eyeball hits plus smite combo. Doesn't quite get that. And then, of course, you're gonna pay the price up against the wall here. Flash kick from Juhan as well to secure the kill. Yeah. I'm really, really smart to think if he didn't kick Flash, there's a really good chance that Jankos gets like half a second and then flashes that thick part of the wall and that, that chase gets really tough. So uh, does take the you know, cooldown burn, but guarantees the kill with it. The benefits of having so many stuns on your team, though, with uh, Kennen plus Syndra landing mm -hmm. there, setting you up plenty of time for Lee Sin to get in there for the play. And now PSG starting to feel the momentum. See, they can keep going. Bot lane actually looking pretty good as well. 7 CS lead with only about a 3 million difference on the wave. So definitely Unified and Kaiwing feeling good down here. Uh, we did see Unified, by the way, lose his summoners off screen a while back. A gauge comes in, though. Targamus could be the target. No, it's going to be on a flat. Get a flash away for Targamus. As he was the one who uh, had the summoner still up, able to get away with a 900 gold lead to PSG Talon. Cap can try in the mid lane. Again, that power spike looks good. The ulti does decent damage. Hexer is still up, so not even close to dying. There's the pop for the cooldown. They trade blows back and forth. Yeah, as soon as he sees the, the extra members down on bottom side, goes for the super aggressive Valkyrie. Does have his blue buff still as well as he clears out mid and gets some extra vision around him. Interesting, I want to see if they go for a top side play because PSG, they're going to take this whole tower, which is not explosive. And the Rift Child at the same time think this sucker okay. is going down quickly. Can they stick around for the rest of it though? That last plate is very tanky. Extra armor and MR on turrets, on turret plates when there's multiple people around, especially when they've been slain recently, as both when they've been slain and just people in general. So pretty tanky turret and doesn't go down just yet, but obviously quite a lot of money earned. Though some of that has been shared by Kaiwing, so not the biggest donation to Unify. And now they're gonna run away. Target miss, no flash, but good anchor. Kaiwing can time the W, does so. Actually just dodges it outright. Well done. So, Corky Package saved there from Caps for the spawn of this dragon. They, it looks like they do not want to allow PSG to even start stacking uh, after the first early dragon. Now G2 have a package timing and Caps is looking to use it bottom. 
And teleports are coming up pretty soon. Similar timing, Hanabi, I think a little bit later than Broken Blade. Broken Blade's up is three, two, one, and basically now. And there's like a five second desync for Hanabi. So does that matter? Because Dragon is up and G2 already on it. And looks like PSG Talon say, no, nope. Hanabi's like, I don't have teleport, can't happen. And they're not even gonna make the play. So G2 able to tie in Drake's. Yeah, love it. Just use the threat of the package while he holds it. Dragon picks up no problem, and as it times out, you can always use it to, you know, push mid or something, uh, extra wave or something with the package. Get your recall off. The timings are quite nice. Tier stacking away, G2, even though they gave up the extra first blood, which was unnecessary um, as, uh, as Jankos went in. Still, they have very, very strong scaling on their side. And going according to plan here. All right, Mascar Mythic is in. Kraken Slayer, sub 12 here for Unified. Again, got his share of some plates, soloed uh, one as well earlier on, so that's going to feel comfortable. Unfortunately, there's nothing to play for. Uh, Harold is, you know, relatively soon. I think it's a, about a minute. We don't have the little marker down the mini map, but it was slain not long after the nine minute mark, so should be fair. Well, actually, it's going to be after 14 minutes, but you can't get second Harold before plates, so it's going to be a bit, but uh, we'll see if Flackhead almost certainly will get his shield bow in time for that. Uh, not doing this right of Dirk Spike that we had seen other Callistas do at this tournament. So um, a more just get to three item kind of build here. Yeah. Almost 50-50 on, uh, on those possibilities. We do have the chem uh, tech uh, or the uh, uh, turbo chem tank picked up here for oh, Yankos. Yeah. Has the extra move speed now, even without the Predator. Also, his free boots came in. So that was the key as well. Plenty of move speed now for the Poppy to actually get in to some of these fights, get an angle for one of those uh, wall plays for himself. Also, Poppy's so good at marking Kennen. Uh, one of the things we mentioned in Champion Select is trying to always mark Kennen for the mid-game team fights, which we're approaching with. Uh, we haven't had too much action yet, but should start to be a concern for the teams, um, especially once the Unleashed Teleport comes in. Yeah. You mentioned Mark and Kennen, actually. I want to point out that uh, I think, oh, well, we got to fight the bottom side first, coming a bit low, crashes backwards. Good rocket jump timing. Let the stun hit during the cast time of rocket jump. Yeah. And then your move block overwrites theirs. Good job getting out. All right, let's see if the 4v3 takes place here. Caps has teleport, and he could teleport to the turret, even though they're not unleashed yet. 20 seconds. Turret dangerously low, though. If you TP, I think the turret actually dies before your teleport finishes. Now it so, does. Yeah, I mean, Brooklyn doesn't have TP anyway. It's going to be a Caps not going to be here as well. Turret goes down. Well done, bot lane siege. There is a Caps teleport into the bottom lane. Uh, not going to mean a whole lot for him, though. Hmm. Yeah. I, they don't, I guess they don't really want to fight on the expiring turret, then just uses it to get right back out to lane in case there was an overchase from PSG. And so PSG keep up their gold lead here and more money, even though this one shared over four members. Uh, Unified yep. still at the top of the gold list here. Yep. Hanabi, of course, doing well in lane as well, has at least taken two plays. Now, Broken Blade actually uh, had TP back to top lane, has run away back to farm Krugs, and he's just kind of letting Hanabi just like knocked down his turret right now. Broken Blade does not think he can safely farm, it seems, uh, because he's letting a wave die to his turret, I think, off the threat of maybe Lee Sin being there. Yeah, pretty annoying harassment, plus the transition up through mid lane here from PSG. Going to secure Rift Trail number two, it looks like. Uh, Yankos is on the way, though. Actually, Syndra is bottom. Bay does have teleports. And the Herald has already been taken. That's almost entirely on uh, top to right now. Targum is going to be taking a lot of damage. Nice pullback, but it's going to deliver damage towards Cap. Ooh. The stun lands. The execution nearly there. One, two, look for a third. They've got it. And PSG Talon are crushing G2 two days in a row. They wipe him off the map and Freak. They had already just taken Rift Herald number two, so they can do damage to these turrets. They will lay waste to G2. They will lay waste to their turrets as well. That's going to be an instant two turret pickup on top of four kills. I cannot believe what I am seeing over the last day. We were talking about how long Neither will the G2 they. win streak last. Those are not happy faces. How long will the G2 loss streak last? Kobe, this is chaotic. They crushed the best teams in the tournament back to back on day one. They crushed EG five times in a row. There, there has been so much focus on Rift Herald fights, and back-to-back yeah. -back in this game, Rift Herald fights for G2 have been disastrous. Targamus gets caught by the crash down here as he's trying to throw out his anchor to pull him away and buffer, but Bay comes in with the two stun on the back line. They can't even reactivate the Callista ult. That was just complete domination from PSG. 
Yeah. Every timing works out for them. They've got Bay in the back line with the Syndra stunning them up. They caught Targamas as his, as his hook is going out towards the wall with the crash down. My goodness, that, that was just Light fight. nice. So incredibly one sided. And because they were able to get it right after they took Rift Trail number two, G2 have no defenses in mid lane now. So when you lose two turrets mid this early on into the game, then your jungle becomes a, 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 just the enemy teams, basically. And PSG constantly going for these invades. They've already got super deep wards into the blue quadrant and will easily be able to take up this dragon. What can G2 do to just dig themselves out of this early game hole? Look for a little bit towards topside, maybe, but Yanko's walking right over a ward. He's spotted. No dive available to Hanabi. 2-0-2 two, two on Rocket Belt toward Void Staff. That is basically lethality cannon, right? Stacking magic pen. You want to do as much damage as possible during the ultimate. Kaiwing here for defense, so it's going to be Hanabi starting it up. Oh. Finds a stun. A lot of damage. Caps jumps away. Hex Drinker is down. I mean, it, not in range for it, more. it's not going to get you a kill, and because everyone else is pretty far away, it's not really going to get you much except for recalls forced here by PSG. But again, a huge chunk onto G2 members, forcing them off the map, and just allows these easy recalls here for PSG to get their resets. This, this game has been cr just crazy from the G2 perspective. They look like so lazy with their Rift Herald setups, you know, uh, single members straggling in, going to, to poke around uh, yeah. the objective after, you know, PSG already burning them down in, in almost both cases. So uh, let's see if they if they can finish it up here because this is means amazing things for PSG as yeah, we're looking towards towards the that fourth place spot. This would be two wins over one of the pool one seeds if they're able to complete this one versus G2. Um, putting tons of pressure on on EG and the rest of the teams that are fighting to, to try and get out of there. And For sure. My goodness, G2. See what they can actually do. They do have strong scaling, and we've been talking about with both the Gwen and the Corky. So all is not lost. It's just some some avoidable mistakes early on in this yeah, game. Yeah, for sure. sure. No, I totally agree with you on that one. Obviously, the team fight will still look pretty good overall. I think that's, it's very well structured with the Nautilus and a Poppy, right? You you can evict Hanabi. Like, Yanko's going to either be superhero land R or just tackle the man and just be in range in the first place. So uh, they can stymie PSG's tools, but obviously, they're really, really sharp on the blue side. Yeah, and the in-game indicators of how far you are behind. The objective bounties uh, yeah. have popped up. So G2 can try and rally behind that if they make a big play and try and collect on some objective bounties. But you never want to be in the spot where those show up uh, as it means PSG will, again, move their vision up, start to take away a lot of your jungle camp income and force you into some of these more dangerous rotations through the fog of war. Here you see the movement. Just, you know, going through. Not a huge problem just yet. Broken Blade and Hanabi squaring off. Broken Blade willing to drop CS once in a while to see, but can I find a flank kill? Can I find a solo? Because one of the downsides is Kennen build. He's flashless, and he has no defensive stats. So if your fight looks good, it's hard for him to get away because you kill him really quickly. Yeah. And so far, the Kennen has had very good DPS. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so many good catches and setup from the rest of PSG. Um, again, I just want to shout out Bay because he has been the one with the big magnifying glass uh, on PSG. You know, a lot of people very critical mm -hmm. of him, but he, he, you know, stood up. You know, he, he took up the Syndra. We were talking about more dangerous of a pick than he, he's been let on. He's been on these very, very safe kind of denial picks previously, but had the huge Syndra stun on the back line in their chase previously and yet to die. I don't know if we're, if we're cursing him currently. <laughs> But he yeah, is. Wow. As PSG Town looks so good right now. G2 look out of sorts. I haven't seen Yankos get a super cool flank in so long. And I haven't seen a five man package yet, Kobe. Mm -hmm. Does G2 I even see, have I it see. in them? Because PSG Talon are careening towards a nine game winning streak. We have seen already, too, in several occasions, though, at MSI teams get some early leads and then be unable to extend them through the mid game. Some of them have fallen prey. You really do need to keep up your uh, aggressive checks on an opponent if you do have a lead like this and they have scaling outs for later. Like, you can't get lazy with your siege uh, of G2 if you allow them equal income here, being able to farm camps, being able to push out waves on side lane uh, without being punished, then you could be in one of these cases where you set yourself up for, you know, one big cash in on objective bounties and all of a sudden you're still facing a three item Corky, yes. regardless of how far ahead you got in the early game. And that becomes a scary situation. Regardless though, PSG Town, very happy with the opening.
And there we go. Pack is going to be claimed up. Uh, Caps, we saw him near it four minutes ago. Decided I should wait. It won't be back up in time for the fourth dragon of the game. So what is chill for like a 10 minute timer? Yeah. Grab the package. So G2 clearly saying, all right, look, we're down 5k. Winnable. <laughs> I assume it's going to be a dragon fight. Same, same, same. Interrupted the first one already. So those stacks aren't going to be super quick. Caps back to the top side, though. Only 18 yeah. seconds means I... His TP. I think they're going to hard commit to this because Yankos are. is definitely there as well. So and he's I, I think it's a good choice. Uh, not Dragons are not going to be imperative anytime soon. It would still need another one for PSG to be able to cash in on yeah. the uh, soul as well as really needing objective bounty money. So G2, intelligent decision. Yes, they made mistakes to get behind like this, but now that you're in this case, this is the best way to get out of it. Trade yep. for money on oh. the top side. Getting two would have been such a big deal. Has package get out though. Not gonna get the second turret, so good to see how to be recall in time. But that would have been, I think, about a 2,000 gold swing. Uh, you know, dropping that gold lead by a lot. I want to point out though, this this 5k gold lead that G2, uh, or that PSG Talon had at 20 minutes. Uh, G2 T1 was 5.8k, and G2 had won that game. So thank you, Stats, for checking that for me. I appreciate you. Uh, but G2 literally came back from worse against, <laughs> I think, definitively a stronger team in T1 uh, back on day one. So again, you can hold out hope. Yes, it's a mountain to climb. Yes, they have to find a team fight win in four and a half minutes, or PSG get Infernal Soul, and that's going to double the lead we already have right now. So 4.5k, we'll see if they can walk that one back. Definitely doable. Definitely winnable, they're saying. Uh, in Definitely chat. winnable. And, and as we were kind of alluding to, it's kind of been calm farming for G2 since they got in this hole. Uh, you know, they, they don't have a lot of options for, for preempting a plays and simply trading gold, trading objectives there. Now you see bottom side, they're pushing up with Gwen. Broken Blade probably won't be able to get any damage on tower because they don't have deep vision and uh, there is a defensive swap here from PSG. Yeah. Um, he actually extends oh, a bit play. too far. 4v1, Baron is on the map, but will it matter? Also going to come across. They're going to definitely get the stun here and Broken Blade. Not a lot of ways to live. Meanwhile, on the side of the map, we do have an attempted kill. Broken Blade still trying in the 1v3. Jumps over. Big damage goes down. Juhan gets it. And now, again, Baron is a possibility. It's mm. 4v2 on that side of the map. They chunked out Bay, and Bay does not have teleport. So low health Syndra, but even with that, they don't have the damage here. They don't have the threat on Baron, and it's an easy call for PSG to just push mid. That's really smart. Because they didn't even threaten Baron. They threatened it's, mid lane it's and taking Tristana. your Nexus. It's turrets. a Tristana. Guess what? You allow Tristana to push mid, your tower's gone. But that is still really smart because I think so many people, like, I like the macro in this game a lot. You've been mentioning how it's been kind of calm. It's because teams are cross mapping when it's like, oh, they have package. We can't fight second dragon. We're not going to bother. And there's not like three stupid deaths. And then the second time around, G2 goes topside because they can't fight for third dragon. No stupid deaths. Like, there's been a lot of really smart cross map plays. Yeah, I think it should have been more aggressive contest on jungle camps uh, towards the mid stages. But here's the teleport to the bottom side. Was interrupted. Targamus and Yankos almost able to chunk down uh, and finish up on Bay. But Bay got to the wall and flashed over. Broken Blade was trying to create as much time as he could. But really, the transition point here is the choice to go to Baron. Um, without having a ton of threat on it. And then Tristana, PSG, being able to yep. make that smart call to run straight through mid and open up that exposed inhibitor now. Yeah, that's what I was alluding to. I agree with you on the jungle contest point. That's mm. actually a really good call. That There probably were many missed opportunities, but saying, oh, we don't have to like walk at Baron and stop you. Because there's plenty of players out there be like, oh, they're Baroning, we have to go. It's like, no, we'll kill inhibitor. Oh, you're right, we have to recall. Yeah. Like, that's really smart. Definitely true here for PSG, extending their lead. And here's another teleport flank. Oh, this is going to look really nice. Hanabi has everything up right now, including Flash. Cavs versus the Zonias. No way out for him. Deleted. And here comes the backline cannon. Got to run low on health, but is it enough there? Hanabi slinking away with his life. A shutdown for one. A one for one team of Targamus. Low. Stopwatch. Here's Broken Blade. Can he win the 1v4? <gasps> going in for damage. Could be the turnaround. Flack gets alive. Shield bullets good. What? And Bay will yet. fall. Explosions on the rear. The G2 want a bit more. Broken Blade going to reset the jump off the minion. Not going to be in range of anymore. What a team fight. Three to one. G2 on the map. Targamus was able to live with the shield off Locket into the stopwatch. Enough time for Flacken to be able to put out the DPS and Broken Blade wrapping around gets G2 this opportunity. But the health bars are so low, it's tough to really play the Baron because Targamus is always going to be... Rend. They've got Rend. Yeah, but is he going to be a free kill? That was the problem because there are a lot of low health bars. Unified coming got to play this one well. 2v4 in Tristana front of the Baron reset. pit. Is it going to be enough? Oh, Flacket gets crit. Oh. Big damage, 5k. Rendable soon. Oh, He's got to go soon. Targamus
Travis pulls in one, could be a kill, will drop, oh Baron low, and it's gonna be claimed. Spider for Poppy, Flacken should die and will do so. Yankos doesn't have the W to stop the jump, so that might be another one. Reset on the jump, yes indeed. Should find it, tackle, not gonna be up in time. And that is three kills. That is equal goal to the Baron claim, but Ooh. Baron's still on two for G2. Yeah, and objective bounty shutdown there as well. Just as uh, as they clean up the Baron, that's the last objective bounty shutdown they can get. So worth it for sure for G2 to cash in on that. And Cap said revive, so Cap's also wearing a Baron buff. All you need is two so that you can do a 4-1 split push. Uh, anyways, here's how Cap died in the first place. Really nice engage from Kai Wing. You see the flash uh, immediate answer here. Uh, and then they've got the wrap around here with the cannon, but the exhaust down was in time. And then Targamus, not only did he get the exhaust onto the cannon, but also really good timing on his stopwatch after the shield damage had been done. And bro once Broken Blade gets there, Flacken knows he's got a new frontliner he can charge behind. And so chasing forward on the Callista, Broken Blade giving him the space and allowing G2 to rotate over Baron, and then they flip it. But Dragon Soul, the kills were long enough to go, the respawns come in, but Dragon Soul's been claimed, so here comes the team fight. Is it winnable? The pull in comes out of the back line, but Unified is free firing, pulled back, package in, Unified stuck in place. The rocks come in for Cass, can he find the kill? No, three for one so far. Broken Blade left, just the solo laners, and Unified stands along his teammates, finds the fourth kill, and G2 lose Soul, G2 lose the fight, and Caps has no team left. And they can chase Caps while sending Tristana Ooh. mid. Johan. Big damage, sidesteps that one. The flash follow. Caps doesn't need four teammates for that fight, but is he needed for the base to fall because there are minions and that inhibitor should drop. Yep, Tristana going mid, going to explode that one really quickly. Caps will be able to get his recall off. It's now the three item Corky, so it is scary, but PSG, I wish we could see the setup coming out of that replay. I, I want to go even further back to see why G2 were, were a bit late on this. Maybe it was just the death timers, but PSG being able to burst down the Dragon Soul before this fight was very, very meaningful. Caps went in, had to jump over the back of the pit, and then he was all, already out of it. Meanwhile, Unified hops forward. They finish off the extra kill there behind Hanabi on the cannon, able to get so much done there, and finishing off the extra kill before uh, they sent Tristana mid. Now it's ex it's uh, no inhibitor towards mid, plus the soul Ooh. picked up, the extra damage. I mean, th this full damage cannon build, Freak, that's that's why you see them. 2,600 mid and bot lane combined don't even compare. Really, really beautiful done. And we're looking at yet another victory here. PSG Talon, three and four at three wins would uh, tie the win count of EG. Of course, still games to play for that team, but uh, the road toward a semifinal spot, definitely looking not too bad here. Yeah, definitely. They definitely do have options and having the soul is very nice for them, but the scaling we mentioned for G2 is now coming to fruition. And they've got a lot of range there with the three item Corky. So we'll see Broken Blade and Caps pushing on bottom trying to trade back some gold for G2. Both of those were objective bounties on, so extra money there and teleporting back for the defense of their inhibitor. And they won't find a stun to that one. Now here comes the Siege, knock back onto the Lee Sim. Not gonna mean a whole lot more. Ultimately, Yankos will not find the next engage. Hanabi does not have flash, does not have a stopwatch. His Banshee's Veil blocked the pushback, which I think is actually very smart, considering uh, you lose a team fight if Yankos manages to evict you, so I think that's actually really intelligent here, uh, despite being against, I mean, half AP, to be fair. Yeah. I, I mean, there there's a ton of damage flying around in this game, uh, and Soul is definitely meaningful, but it, it also means if you get the the perfect knockup, the perfect opening there, Targamus has been very strong for initiating for G2. They can get kills uh, very quickly. All the PSG members, are fairly squishy, except for Kai Wing. Yeah, they've supplemented at least with itemization. I agree, they're still very one shot. The cannon has no stopwatch, but Lee Sin does. Yeah, Lee Sin stopwatch. You've got the Banshees on the mid lane and a Maw for Tristana, so they're aware of that threat, Kobe. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, Tristana's not natively tanky. I'm gonna take a pit stop here, 2800 gold to <laughs> the Maw. Like, I don't wanna get one shot by Caps. I think the biggest advantage here for PSG, just usher these super minions up the mid lane, and then G2 have to answer the super minions as well as uh, this bottom lane where the secondary turret should not be fought over. This one is not worth it. Should definitely give this one up, allow PSG to push a little bit closer and yep. go for a more defensible position inside your base with that wall and the inhibitor turret. Minute 18 until Baron spawns. You have to believe PSG Talon going to start playing for the top side. They've knocked down all the tier two turrets. Mid's already pressure at that point with the inhib down. So I feel like top jungle's the play and you play that dance. 
Yeah. Getting rid of all the vision and then see. All right, Baron, can you face check this? Yankos does have flash, does have smite, and could even evict Juhan. Yeah. It's critically, too, you're going to have to watch marking Hanabi. Hanabi has done so much damage for PSG. So that means Yankos and Targamas will have to have that on their minds. Where is Kennen? This Kennen has Protobell and Flash and a Banshee's Veil as well. With Banshee's Veil, it makes it a lot more difficult. Somebody's going to have to, you know, maybe caps throw out a rocket uh, early to try and get that off so they could actually eject the Kennen. Otherwise, the Kennen has not only done a bunch of damage, but also created so much space that uh, PSG, very, very happy about the possible setup here. With Baron arriving in 25 seconds, they want to take over vision control around the objective first. You can see the kind of vision that they have right now. Sweeper does catch the first ward. Control ward going to be easily visible as well, but they can't play that far up. Caps' is poke actually doing a good job of pushing PSG out of a jungle they maybe should already own. Now, top is pretty much equilibrium. That's kind of about where both teams have their territory, the, you know, where those ninja bins are beating. Mid is an automatic push, but Flacket easily clears it with a hurricane. All Baron's right. alive. Baron starting versus a four item Corky. Let's see how much work the Rockets can do. PSG are burning it down though. 7,000 health and counting. But can they get rid of Yankos is the problem. They don't find the stun. This could be it. This could be Yankos finding everything he ever wants. Target is low. Gets a shield. No eviction. Is it going to be enough TP into the pit? They're going to go for broke. They get the smite. And here comes the team fight as well. A lot of space built by Hanabi. Staying alive in the elite one. Target is down. Broken Blade dives in. Gets one back. No pushing back on a cap. Yankos one hit from dead. And he goes for everything. Unified. Just gonna delete PSG. the LEC! PSG Talon, a triple kill for the Rady Carry, and that's gonna be the base. That's gonna be the game! PSG! Huge, huge stuff there. This sacrifice from Hanabi. He goes around the back of the Baron Pit. He takes out Yankos, so Yankos can't get in for the Smite Seal, and Unified's gonna finish the game. And Broken Blade is against the world. Even two's not gonna be enough. He's gonna step, he's gonna try, but he's gonna get cut down. The Rock of G Talon unified, unkilled, 707, and G2 fall to four and three. PSG Talon find their third win. PSG Talon have G2's number, and it's G0 and two versus PSG now. Unified again. We mentioned at the beginning of the game, this bottom lane for PSG Talon has done so much work, has been so critical in all of their wins, and yet this game, Every member stepped up. Yeah. Bay with the Syndra stun early on on the back line, getting them that team fight lead, that early lead in the game that PSG were able to use for so many minutes to extend. And Hanabi on the cannon. Huge, huge damage. And it means, I believe, that PSG Talon retain control of their own destiny. Even if EG wins out, if PSG beats EG, you tie in wins by winning out, you pick a tiebreaker, and you make that move forward. So beating G2 keeps them, again, in control of their own destiny. They can always catch EG regardless of that team's results. And the fight is to, again, make the semifinals, and they're on the road. This is so big for PSG because the single win that they had gotten over G2 previously still put a lot of importance in their next game versus EG because then if EG won, they would have head-to-head -head tiebreaker. But now, with another upset win, they've got all the power yeah. and everybody's sweating now in this group. This makes Rumble Stage so much more exciting here. Thank you, PSG. That That is huge. Back-to-back you know back upset wins versus G2. You know what's fun, actually? Um, only CLG has ever gotten more than five wins <laughs> in a Rumble stage at MSI. Even G2, when they won in 2019, mm -hmm. went five and five. Uh, I'm just saying, they can see that again here, but being four and three means they're on the road to that 50% record in the Rumble stage. Now, PSG take down G2 for a second time in a row, and after the break, we'll hear from the Victorious Unified. So stay tuned. I feel like what's holding us down is we're not too confident in making aggressive plays. Once we get in the mood of doing that, we're much more consistent that um, the results will be way better. Gameplay Colty just absolutely massive and say it's one versus three. T1, bounce back. The world 
is watching. Get on board, check the lanes. Pay attention to the best. Join the ranks, be the challenger. All in for the trophy. This is for all senses. This is for all players. Buckle up, take notes. MSI 2022, driven by Mercedes EQ. Red Bull gives you wings. State Farm Analyst Desk after PSG take down G2 and move to three and four in the standing. So I'm gonna revisit that PSG blueprint that we started at the top of day right here and see if they kind of followed some of our instructions. So get Bay a pick he can contribute on. I actually definitely think this is a big check mark. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, <laughs> it's a plus because actually, uh, even though Syndra wasn't one of the things that we highlighted, it's actually one of his most played, his third most played champion, and he has a 67% win rate on that pick. 
Easy to execute team compositions with 5v5 potential, I think was also there. And then this is the big thing. Unified on a carry again on his Tristana and then Kaiwing on primary initiation. Kaiwing is someone that I've actually talked about at multiple international events. I think he's a phenomenal support. Even in some of the games they were losing earlier at this event, his rel was still getting these insane engages off. So Kaiwing on primary initiation is also great. Bay with the follow up with the uh, the uh, Syndra stun, something he's super comfortable on. And then Unify just firing from the back line on Tristana. You know, Trevor, you talked a uh, lot. Come of on. Smack. You know, uh, I feel like we made a mistake because I don't think PSG needed a blueprint. I think G2 ooh. were the ones who needed a blueprint because, uh, yeah, that kind of floundering. G02 doesn't even work anymore because they've lost three in a row. Oh, come on, come on. Okay, don't pick on me. Right, listen, that was a fantastic game. I love the fact that we set up some expectations on the blueprint. We've got a lot of content to run through, so let's pick up the draft order really quickly and talk about, first of all, is adaptations. Orgs, I'm going to come to you first. Yep. We did take a look at a few things. We wanted to see some specifics out of Bay, Unify. It all came true. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing is that something I really like is they had multiple ways of engaging, right? They had the Rel, which is really good at just finding those big snap engages, but the cannon on the flanks also really instrumental. And I felt like they were picking the fights, they were starting them on their terms. And the problem is for G2, even though things like the Poppy, I think, worked well into a lot of champions that uh, PSG had, ultimately they were kind of still at the whim of the enemy team. Yeah, I feel like I actually really liked the Poppy in this draft. Um, the other thing I do want to point out is the Callista. When I think of Flacid and his success, and I do think he's definitely like still stepped up at this tournament, mm -hmm. right? I think of him in LEC as like a team fighter, right? Like I think of the Jinx, I think of the Aphelios. Um, I think of what we kind of saw them going through with on in playoffs. And Callista, I don't think it, it was bad. I don't think it's the reason why they lost. But I think if G2 still want to do these kind of 5v5 team fight compositions, I'd want to get him more on a hyper carry. I want to move us along because we only have a few minutes and bring up the first replay. I also want to explore some of those thoughts because I think Broken Blade, the impact he's had during the group side and rumble stage rather on tanks, in my opinion, has been more impactful than some of the carries. This first fight, Emily, around the Rift Herald, a clear change of priority for PSG, not only looking to play it, but also picking up Dragon as well. So yeah, PSG actually were able to get first Drake prior to this and then they prioritized they were able to cross map on the Herald. I think the other thing that happened here is that it seemed to me, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, that Yangos felt like he needed to go in there, right? Yeah. When G2's composition actually doesn't need to contest that. They can still step back. We still saw them winning a few team fights later on with this composition. I feel like that was one thing where it felt like they thought they needed to make a play make in a that decision moment. Under pressure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it actually ended up snowballing the game significantly, in my opinion, for PSG. Yeah, because I think if you have the Gwen into the cannon, you're not going to have a fun time in lane, but you are going to be super relevant in the later team fights. If you have yep. the Corky and the Syndra, you're not going to have priority, but again, super relevant later on. But it felt like despite they drafted to lean into that, they still felt like they didn't want to take their hands off the wheel. I need to take a second and Orgs ask you to explain to me where this bay comes from, because in our <laughs> next replay, not only is a setup great from Kaiwing, which is one of the things that we wanted to see on the scorecard, but the Syndra flanks, the Syndra performance, I mean, this is PSG's best game of the entire tournament. Yeah, well, I think ultimately a lot of the weaknesses for Bay have been like laning phase, but even then in team fights, there's been some bad games, some better games, but it feels like the team, they know what their role is, they're very coordinated. Kyron did a great job of setting up this TP ward. Bay just has to come in and like a lot of the work is already done by the team. G2 are already escaping and he just comes in, lands a stun, and everyone's there to follow up. And this is like the platonic ideal of what you'd want to see from PSG team fighting in this thing, right? Like uh, Kai Wing going in, being the primary initiator, Bay being able to follow up with CC. Once again, I do want to highlight, this is one of his most played picks. He has a very high win rate on it, actually, if you take out a lot of his like one-offs, like I think there's like a Seraphine in there or whatever. Um, it is something that he's still super comfortable on, even if it's not something we thought of, like the Lissandra, like the Galio, where he's going to be kind of radiating pressure outward instead. Yeah, and I feel like one of the things is because Caps took Corky, you're not under as much pressure to neutralize. It's not like the LeBlanc yeah. where you yep. can get bullied yep. out. Yeah. So it was really comfortable. Yeah, as soon as Corky was locked in, Emily actually sighed. Like, legitimately. <laughs> I just Corky. don't like watching Corky. I'm now, the sorry. Thing I'm is, the it bone. puts me to sleep. The thing is, the draft itself, I don't think was the, the deciding factor in how this game played out. I mean, PSG just yeah. outplayed G2 at every opportunity, every single team fight. After that second Herald, um, Medic and I basically just said, well, that's it, we're done. 
However, there was a momentary glimpse of hope as G2 did pick up at least one team fight win in the mid lane, went towards Baron and then all went to hell again. Um, Emily, I'll come back to you with this one. <laughs> but as it started off, it looked like it could have been bad for G2 because the TP flying from behind. Yeah, and I mean, I think this is where you do end up seeing, like, um, watch Broken Blade coming back into it. Because again, it, it looks like it's going to be pretty rough for them. And then this is exactly what you want the Gwen for. Just like Ox said, it's not going to be the strongest in lane into the Kennen, but Flacket is able to free hit there. And then Broken Blade is just, you know, at the front line being like, okay, come get me. You can't fight me. I think the critical thing is that it was a great job from Yankos to interrupt the Kennen from getting in. Yep. And that was why it worked. It's kiting back using those tools. But the problem is they go into the Baron pit so low on HP, and I can understand the thought process. You are in a desperate spot. You kind of have to go for this, but they end up losing so much out of it. And actually, because of the timers here, the soul is what follows up after, and PSG are able to secure that. How good was that soul fight, by the way? Because oh, uh... it was... I mean, I think <laughs> Juhan, honestly, had this fantastic kick. We had the mm -hmm. Kennenal as well. Like, they really outperformed those teams. We do fights. need to move us on. I do need to move us on. Phenomenal game from PSG. They take down G2 for a second time, and Law is joined by Unified in the Verizon post game interview. I mean, we didn't even talk about him. He's amazing. <sighs> And we're back in Busan for day four of the Rumble stage after this back-to-back -back victory from PSG against G2. And I have Unified with me to talk about this game. Ni hao, and thank you so much for joining me. Can you talk me through the late game team fights and especially how you handled Gwen, Corky, and the exhaust from the support? 首先恭喜你們獲得了本場比賽的勝利,第一個問題也想問一下關於這局比賽的內容,你們是如何處理後期的團戰的,特別是面對對面的格溫、庫奇以及來自輔助的虛弱呢? 不輸他們的,他們還有兩個前期的角色,所以我們打團還是有優勢的。I think for the late game, in the late game, the opponent's team, they can perform decently in the team fight, but I think the damage is mainly from the mage. So I'm not that worried about that based on my item build. And also the opponent's team, they got two early game champions. So I think in terms of the team fight draft, we are stronger than the opponents. So we're not worried about the late game team fight. Team fight. Once again, and it fits the meta so much. Quick words about PSG because it feels like you're getting stronger after every game. Do you feel this way too? 那其實我們好像感覺PSG每一場比賽變得越來越強,狀態越來越火熱,你們也是這樣感覺的嗎? Yeah, I can feel this a bit because we feel like we're a very slow swarming team and we can do better and better. And now we have a better understanding towards the meta. Uh, so I think we still make some improvements and our uh, progress maybe is faster than other teams. So people will treat us like this. That is super impressive and looking forward to seeing how far you guys can go. A few words about the bot lane because you and K-Wing have been key elements throughout PSG's victory so far, it feels. Could you rate the impact you have in the whole team? 那现在感觉好像你和K-Wing作为一个下路双人组在队内是扮演很重要的一个制胜点的。所以说你怎么样去看待你们可能在队内所扮演的一个角色或者一个定位呢? 嗯,覺得覺得我們下路線比較那個發動吧,就是一個發動的點,所以嗯我們最好是抓好前面有優勢的點,就是我們下路盡量不要劣勢,就是嗯因為我們優勢的話,我們輔助很會跑線,所以
unlimited possibilities here for PSG Talon. Thank you so much for the interview. She -she. Thank you. And Wendy, thank you so much for joining us on remote translation. And you guys in Berlin, back to you.